The clock is ticking as the big game plays out 48 hours of continuous cash poker. Once your money's gone, it's either rebuy or leave the game. Titles and bracelets mean nothing. The only thing that matters is cash. Last time out at the Dustal Dawn Casino, the return of Tony G to the table breathed new life into the game. I'm ready to put all the money in the middle if you want to just flip it one time. We're playing the game now. You get kind of frisky this time of day. Mike was desperate. He didn't have anyone to fund him. Now he knows he can rely. There's the bank. Now that you're here, I know I got more. I can get more money so I can open up my range, you know? Bike time for you. The next bluff is going to be the best one. But look how good I am. Out of position, I'm always in there battling, fighting against the odds. Can Tony G top Gentilly as the biggest winner in Big Game 5? Or will his table mate shut the mouth from down under up? Big winners so far, still Jennifer Tilly, but Tony G is breathing down her neck, and believe me, that 54,000 pounds profit is always in play. Robert Williamson the third, putting on a nice winner. JP Kelly, Roberto Romanello still at the table as well. Looking at the losing side, Mike Matisau starting to creep into Sam Trickett territory, and that's not a good thing. He's currently stuck 25K. Keith Johnson having no fun, and neither is Rob Young. Unique to the big game is the eliminations. Players have to face the additional pressure of being voted to leave the game, not only by the other players at the table, but also by poker fans. Win or lose, the players are never safe with the world's only poker eviction. I don't want to go. I'm like the worst at this. This is too stressful. Players can be evicted either by an online audience poll or via a vote off by the players at the table. Our players will be asked to write down the player they'd most like to see leave the game. And is it two Enzo? And secretly show their nominations to the under the table cameras. Only the most active player at the table will be immune from eviction. <laughs> oh, it's so tilt. Do I go for a ball with it? Yeah. That's right. Dusty yeah. Schmidt with me yeah. here yeah. in the pay. box in yeah. Nottingham. For sure. And Every this big game five, five time going time now time for time. just I over 36 totally hours. Like every, every street, you get 15 yeah. seconds and you get like a 30 second time. Mike Manasau wishes. In the back you know of his mind like, that maybe he had like stayed this? in California. That would be the nuts. That would be the best form of poker in the world. Yeah. Where everyone you just go like this, call you have a up clock, to 350 and every from time the you mic. hit it, it just resets. And if it beeps and your hand's dead. You have 15 seconds to shoot. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that would be brilliant. They did that in the 100K in Australia. Madison drawing to 1-5 yeah. yeah. is like to make play it, the monster. It, 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 it was a little bit, but it was a little bit I just too much. I just did a voice. Tony G with the yeah. 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 structure. Okay, so yeah. it should be a King little, you got to find the sweet spot. Position. But, but the having, the terrible. implementing no. that makes great the game so much. Let's say Tony G's the heavy favorite to win this pod post-flop. Especially for TV. Why would you play a super satellite structure? That's the only catch. Sometimes you're going to fall. Rob picks up the first play. Now we kind of become the favorite to to win this pot, given that he can be pretty aggressive yeah. with his draw, and nobody's super it's strong here. Yeah. Still like your first call. Tony, the power at home. I mean, it's not a great spot for Rob Young to start check raising and stuff, is it? No, a check call, if you're going to put in the money, why not just uh, put it in betting it yourself? I, I think lead out. Yeah, Rob, Rob should certainly go ahead and uh, lead out there uh, on the flop. And he's, he he would have got through Tony by simply just continuing to bet, but now he's in a position where Tony's like, the like aggressor and, and Rob's you know, like each section, having to sort of figure out like whether he feels lucky street, like uh, here to, to draw to his flush. But yeah, this, yeah, this yeah, whole hand like would have played out a lot different had Rob yeah. just let so out. Cool, Certainly Tony yeah, G yeah, would have uh, yeah, maybe third, peeled third, one for for his gut shot, but but certainly would have been blown off the hand by the turn if Rob had just continued betting. Yeah, and you know, if Tony G had even had a hand as strong as like a raggedy ace, Rob can still usually win that pop by the river. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And now, this is going to be interesting because Tony's, or yeah, Tony's going to most likely get checked to here, and he's going to wonder if he's uh, should should keep bluffing. And he 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 definitely doesn't think he has the best hand, so he's trying to just basically blow Rob off what he thinks has got to be some type of uh, either really strong queen or, or really weak ace. Well. 
just had a Amaretto <laughs> and coffee. I don't. <laughs> I think Tony just thought, I don't have anything, I better bet. <laughs> yeah, Tom. <laughs> yeah, you're certainly not expecting when a guy check calls you twice that King is good. At least. Because you would think draws, like we said, would just go ahead and fire uh, out bets. So I guess Maybe Rob, if he's thinking, he must be thinking of a check raise, but doesn't find that heart and commitment to <laughs> win this pot, like Tony G would say. He's obviously going to show the king of spades. And Tony uh, feeling pretty good about himself, thinks he just uh, made a really good bluff, but as we know, <laughs> He had uh, he had the best hand by a long ways. Tense times as the eviction looms. You don't put yourself in Which of these players is going to prove least popular to their table mates? Those are pretty unique. You need to be. I think it'll be Tony G. Keith Johnson. <laughs> he needs to. He needs action, and he needs to win a pot. He's 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 really. But he was too deep. I don't know. Things just haven't gone his way. You have to make it 15, and then if he moves in, I have to fall. Then you're blown off the hand. You can't get. You almost get a free card just calling. And yeah, he's, uh, you like know, he, he's stuck uh, a pretty big number here, over 20,000 pounds. Hasn't had a whole lot going for him. Much obliged. Not only that, that, he lost the big pot with the jacks, the big pot with the tens. Now he's got the queens. He's, he's, he's probably got a lot of negative energy on the big pair of five ways. I even had enough to call five to, you know, I'm calling five We're going to see well, we're getting yeah. smashed up. Yeah, well, he, he's we'll going to have to be willing to certainly uh, felt a flop so like this uh, yeah. uh, yeah. with an overpair. Beat about 11 ways here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean Young's got the nuts. Mattisau's got a hell of a draw to his hand, and JP's got the tough flush draw. I'll tell you what. I mean, is there a chance that Johnson might get very lucky here, and there'll be so much money in the pot by the time he gets back to him? Actually, now Mattisau making this raise, when it comes back to JP, uh, he could go ahead and, and potentially re-raise and blow Johnson completely out of the, the pot. Uh, he's not going to like his queens if it, if it gets too much action uh, post-flopping. Check that out with JP Kelly. That's, that, that's, that's a really weird play. That's the kind of play where he's really doesn't want to put money in a pot without a nut flush draw. He sees a lot of guys in this pot. Well, you know what the thing is? It really is a function of Mattisau's stack size. He feels that he's committed at this point, and he probably thinks that he basically has all made hands and, and probably better draws and, you know, like maybe an A-side draw. So um, I think that's, that's, that's basically the situation. King flush draw? Would you fold it there like that? Well, I think he feels he has no fold equity, basically. And so if you, if, if you purely can, if you can never get the other opponent to fold, then his hand certainly is behind uh, his opponent's check raising and Mattisau's check raising range. And so we wind up seeing uh, 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 Keith fold the best hand here is, is Young obviously uh, flops the nuts. Yeah, yeah, Rob and flops the nuts. gonna get the real bad news that he's drawing completely dead. What are you doing now? Let's go. He folded, he's, he's got no hands. I have no outs. I don't think Madison realizes that he's got a nine for a shot. Let let him deal it. Does he mucked his hand? I don't, I don't he keeps saying he has, he's mucked his hand. He keeps saying he has no outs. Well, he, he just basically threw away 7% chance at 20,000 pounds. It's $1,400. Nice, nice play, nice hand. 1,400 pounds. It's 1,400 pounds in equity. Two grand worth of equity. What do we got, Mike? How are those chips looking? Chips. Well, uh, there's there's some murmuring, and we've heard some table talk. Uh, the you, the, the you part are, of this game that's kept up, everybody yeah. on the edge of their seats has, has you know, caused you constant. Constant. You know, you get disqualified. That's constant. Yeah, you you don't vote, the eviction okay, process you is looming. Mike, if you don't vote, you no, go. No, no, you whoever don't. doesn't make a vote gets disqualified. Well, that's fair. Tony, you're the boss. Tony, everybody vote Tony up. Yeah, you can vote me off. I don't the votes mind. Have been made. Bicycle. The die has I been cast. The cards are yeah, on. I'm 
I want to vote. And uh, Alec like Torelli. And you're in the running. You're in the this is quite running. amazing. I think, obviously, hey, these guys Life's are all voting for a guy who thinks a great player and very dangerous. However, I always think it's interesting to vote the guy with a big stack off the table. You're losing 70,000. But uh, Torelli oh. has been uh, either like first or second in the voting, uh, we were talking about before, most of the time. And he kind of knows that soon or later this is going to happen. I wish I had like that. I wish I had five him terrible fits of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 well, I think JT now making a late charge. What do you, oh, look at this. Uh -oh. Is it tied between them? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh, I think JT's in trouble. Uh -oh. And you want to get trouble. rid of me? Thank you, Rob. This is uh, the great backhanded compliment. I don't think you are. You're a nice guy, but you're too good. We don't yeah. want you. <laughs> I didn't know how to feel. I was the first player to ever get evicted from the big game. I was like, what do I think about because he's evicted? Well, but it is. It's, do everyone hate me or do they think I'm good? The player about to be evicted from the table by the other players is... Seat 2, JP. Are you giving two names? JP says that's it. You can go if you want. 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 Play every time. Anyway, JP I Kelly, I'll tell you what, yeah, the, the, the shame of the matter is, Dusty, is that you, I think he was uh, really kind of on track to, well, to having a real shot of being the big winner in the big game, uh, which now he's kind of been denied. But he has won, oh, like 25, 30,000 pounds, so not a bad day at the office for JP. And no, I mean, in a lot of ways, you know, you know, you know you're going to walk away a winner at this point, so uh, it's, it's bittersweet. It's a commercial game, you know, you get voted off if you're not performing up to standard. Okay, so we're back here with JP Kelly, who just got shock voted out of the, uh, the big game by his uh, table mates. What was all that about? I have no idea. I, don't know. I, I kind of felt like I was going to get voted off. It just seemed like there was a little gang eyeing me up, so, uh, and not in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I said to Roberto, I said, I think I'm going this round. Uh, I, I felt like if it went to the public vote, I didn't think I'd be anywhere near the... Um, the bottom two because I've been playing lots of hands and mm. I guess so. Oh well, it's one of the things. Seat open and among those remaining at the table, Tony G. Now the big winner, 57,000 pounds ahead. He'll see how far he can keep this one going. Robert Williamson, the third's night keeps getting better. Torelli finally has gotten to even while Mike Matisau's away game is not up to scratch. We'll be back for more action at the Party Poker Big Game 5 from the Dust Till Dawn Casino. Welcome back to the Big Game 5, where JP Kelly has made way and taking his seat is Martin Zadenia. Let's get back to the game. Martin Zadenia sitting down. He is an exciting player to watch. And, you know, it's quite funny because uh, trading JP Kelly for Martin Zadenia, you don't know, they're good friends, they're mates. Uh, not only that, but they travel around together. Uh, I think in a lot of ways, Martin Zadenia is sort of a young, newer version of J.P. Kelly. Believe me, he's going to be aggressive. And I don't know if this is a bargain for the rest of the table. A couple of years now, even before I had, I had met Martins, and of course he's played several times on uh, televised poker. Uh, guys like Sam Trickett and... JP and, and uh, Toby Lewis and those guys. Everyone was talking about James Aikenhead, that uh, this young player, Martin Zdenio, is going to be the next, the next big thing on the UK scene. I think there is something special about the big game, which is that it's always been a very good game. I mean, like, you looked at those, <laughs> the uh, the V-chips of the eight players at the table, there wasn't a guy under 35%. So, That's incredible. So, I mean, like, you know, like, if you're playing at a table where everybody is guaranteed to have an over 35% V-chip, you know, uh, tight, solid, and aggressive is uh, it's not the worst recipe for success. No, it definitely isn't. I mean, this is the type of game where everyone's actually so loose pre-flop that theoretically you could just sit around and wait for only premiums and you expect so much action to be 
created in front of you. Right. That as long as you're not consistently getting these hands under the gun, you you could uh, you could show a profit simply playing this game that way. But as Tony G would say, that'd be a really riveting style. <laughs> Check this out. Uh, Tony G's let out. Rob Young's call with the three eights, and now Roberto Romanello sort of check raising the field and. I mean, is he trying to get Tony G to fold the same hand? Is that what he's trying to do? Or is this you know, just like this is part of that randomness of, uh, of Tony G. I don't know what he's thinking. <laughs> it's a well, for calling, but Roberto with the with the check raise. I mean, is it? It's pretty dangerous, isn't it? Yeah, that's interesting. I uh, I think you know he's in sort of that spot where if he flats, he he kind of looks really strong, and if he re raises, he looks really strong. So when you get that much action in front of you and you have a monster like that, uh, there's really no sneaky way to play. I love an omelet. Yeah, vegetarian. Not crazy about Mike C. I I don't know. He's um. I'm straddling. Mike Mattisau's seat at this table. Doesn't seem like he's. Getting the right kind of action. <laughs> Pretty flat. <laughs> Torelli, on the other hand. If we go ahead and eat now, we can, we'll have enough room to eat again. Alex, has it stopped eating? That's how I look at it. I mean, uh, you definitely want to be. You know, Tony G's left is a is 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 a, is a great place, or is it a really tricky place because you end up trying to isolate and then find yourself in weird pots with guys behind you. Raised. It's definitely a weird spot when the when the raises come from uh, from up front. Uh, so he's just going to make really like a, a almost a min raise. That's really more than min raise. Right, Torelli made this 400, and Rob Young made it uh, 900. Yep. I mean, I think three betting and, and flatting in position are both fine options. Um, he might have made the re-raise small just in case he got uh, Torelli decides to come back over the top. He can call comfortably. Interesting, yeah. I'll take him because yeah, because I gave it to Mikey, and now I, the other kid doesn't have chips. Mike's right. Torelli's a pretty scary guy to me, too. Uh, you know, like, he's now made this four bet. And okay, brilliant. You kind of feel like he doesn't need to have anything, but then you feel, would he do it to me? Well, what's really odd about this is you see these really tiny three bets out of players, and the ranges are typically really polarized between, like, aces and kings and really garbage hands. It's not too often you have a hand like this that's that's putting in a, a, a small re-raise so a lot of Torelli's three that might have been just to sort of define the situation a little better too and obviously partly for value because he thinks he's ahead of most of his range nobody's obviously in, in love with this flop given the, uh, there's over cards to, to both uh, both their pairs no and uh, you know Torelli's looking over Rob it's uh, it's it's um, it's a lot of chips. Rob's got 25,000 back. You know, there's no way Torelli wants to get 25,000 pounds in this pot um, on this board with the two cleans. And when Torelli makes a four bet like that and then checks that type of flop, Rob's got to be thinking, you know, that he's uh, he's got some sort of marginal made hand because you'd think the if he if he was on total air he'd he'd fall up and continue to rep a hand like Ace King or. or uh, Kings or aces. Right, so he, he would have actually have bet the flop with ace queen most of the time, you feel like. Yeah, yeah. Torelli's honestly, his hand looks a ton like either a bad hand that squeezed and then made a decent hand on the flop, like king eight, or it looks a lot like <laughs> like pocket queens, basically. <laughs> wow, you, you you play against the young internet kids way too much. Yeah. <laughs> you, just, you just instantly put the king eight in the range. <laughs> yeah. You do that sometimes. You start four bet and bluffing, and then you get unexpectedly called uh, your four bet, and then you make some yeah. sort of marginal hand. And Torelli's got to think, checking, you know, after... Uh, Rob checks back uh, twice that, uh, uh, you know, he, he wouldn't do that with a king. So this this is this is a good little value bet here. In fact, he I'm almost a little surprised Charlie didn't start value betting it on the uh, on the turn. This just looks so much like he had a like I said some type of queens or maybe he four bet light and then flopped some marginal hand and now he's looking to get some value out of it. I think. Rob's made a good fold. Yeah, he did make a very good fold there. 
We had Dusty. I don't know if you were here, but there was one qualifier, uh, an online qualifier, named Andre Pedersen, who lasted a grand total of one hand. I was there for that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was, that was sick. against the devil fish. <laughs> that poor guy. Yeah. Flopped the nuts the very first hand and just see ya. Yeah, flew all the way over from Sweden for the one hand against the devil fish. It's a long a, way to come for one hand. He's got a he's got a great story to tell. <laughs> <laughs> a great poker story for the rest of his life about how some yeah, donk like named the devil fish. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's not going to be too funny to him in the beginning, but 20 years from now he's going to tell that story about how he flew, <laughs> flew so, across so many countries to get to to play one hand. All these meals, okay? Okay, should look after you. So this was uh, this was opened. Uh, it's like limped in on the straddled and then limped a couple limps. Mike Mattishaus raised this to 425, and now it's just gone completely around here. Four ways anyway, five ways I believe. Yeah, this is not the type of game where you're going to be expecting to get a lot of your squeeze plays to uh, to go through the field. People are pretty inclined to see a flop in these types of games, especially with the stacks he's deep. Tony G leads out with the nut flush draw. And it'll be, of course, interesting to see what Martin Zidania does here with the uh, top pair. Yeah, when Tony... Uh, Leads out on this type of board. I think he's pretty heavily skewed towards a bunch of draws. But at the same time, it's going to be hard for Martins yeah, to, to, to raise and, and, and really get and, and really find a great spot to make in that play as well. So he chooses to just call. I mean, a, a, go, a good card for Martins, but you're starting to, you know, obviously worry about the Queen of Diamonds and things like that. And well, I think I think he, he likes this card overall because. The only hands that that, that is really going to turn into a value betting hand for Tony if he had him on a draw is if it's like Queen Jack, Queen of Ten, King Queen of Diamonds, that type of hand. So this is not a total brick, but it's it's a. Uh, it, it's it's definitely one of the safer cards uh, to Martins. And this part of the volatility, or Martins knows that by calling there, he's going to have to call pretty often on the river. That that's that's a bad card. I mean, the four or five and the flush got there. Yeah. Now this is the hand where, you know, if he was behind. Or if he was ahead, he's certainly not ahead now. And I might quit. I didn't do common like, like almost never. Yeah, close to never. Yeah. Common Jane. Sent out. Huh? Oh, I'm. Can we just order? Thank you. The only the only thing he's really ahead of is if Tony G had something like a pocket fours, pocket fives. That's kind of started to turn its hand into a bluff. But that's just obviously such a small part of his range. It's not going to be enough to uh, for Martins to really justify a call here. Well, he has laid it down. I think when you when you're Martins and you you kind of like are imagining yourself in the in the uh, in, a, in a big cash game and stuff like that. You know, he's not saying to himself, "I'm going to have to make some great great laydowns," but that is part of it. And he's passed that first hurdle. Oh, the wolf's in town. I'm putting a Lithuanian in. A Lithuanian. Well, William DeWolf actually got evicted it's at one point last night. I, believe me, he's played in cash games all over the world. No one has ever asked him to leave. <laughs> and I'm sure Roland would appreciate me saying this. You know, he, they make any, any game that Roland wants to be in will go from nine-handed to ten. I mean, you know, he's fun. He gives action. He's, um, yeah, and he's sort of this, uh, you know, he he, uh, he just changes the whole conversation. Of the game. He sort of you know, lights up the room, this, this guy. He's a, a huge personality. And, uh, you know, he's... Well, we know who's not going to win this time. We're not winning. <laughs> oh, <is that> <laughs> <wrong? laughs> we got Keith Johnson coming up with a pair of queens. I tell you. Oh, this, this guy... We got to keep Mikey in the game. This guy is just completely snake bit. Keith Johnson, why doesn't he just get him in and let Tony G just dog him out with the ace? What about... 50 big blinds. I've stacked up 200 big blinds. Yeah, but when it's... 800. 
So Keith goes ahead and makes a, a, a re raised 800. Like and Rob Young always picks up pocket kings. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Keith. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to laugh. That's what we're doing. I swear I'm so done. This night. Don't. Don't ever remember this hey, night. This, there'll, be, there'll be a lot, a lot better days for Keith Johnson in the, in the future hey, in his poker I'm career. Yankees, man. We gotta get rid of you. And, uh, change your hat. Wherever, wherever you Dusty, we've all had nights like Keith Johnson, and it's absolutely no reflection on him as a player. I don't. There is no way a queen is coming. Oh, it really is. Now he needs a, a king, actually. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, wow. I mean, just rubbing it in. Oh, man. That poor guy. Oh, that poor guy. That's one of the heartbreak stories yeah. of the big game there. And uh, it really yeah. is. Yeah, which position do you like? It's just, like, listen, this is part of poker. If you don't understand that poker is a He's you going to go go laugh now. Yeah, Keith Johnson leaving his 35,000 pounds on the table. Have a look at these stacks. Nearly 250,000 pounds right now on that table. It's all in play, but Tony G and RW3 have got the bulk of it. Lisa Marie now down on the floor with some good news for our players. Okay, so it's time now yeah, for another Poker deserve. News bonus you know, pot, which means yeah. 500 pounds into the next pot. So oh, nice straddle. I could have printed 3,000 if you using stack right there. Nice straddle, right? Cristione. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 well, I got to keep my logo yeah. on, man. I can't get Come in anyway. Just, just come into the so game with no logo, and you'll put it on later. Okay, Cristiano comes in first, and then we wait for him. Jump in. Come on. What are you doing? What is it, 425? Yeah, sorry, I just... Cool. Vote for Pass. You're not gonna vote? Well, we no got action vote. here, and... I'm gonna vote for Alec to get off. He never Jewish plays a hand. And, he, he's a and Martin's uh, keeping up with his aggressive style like here, raises a 5-6 suit, it makes it 425 uh, this time. Well, I get nine deuce every hand, then I pick up... Like, I, get, I get aces every hand. I I think Tony G's just, just already called. This is just sort of like... I think this is one of those. Um, I think I played. Tony G has these stubborn moments where he's just like, you, you're a little too active. I'm gonna get you. You. Yeah. He doesn't quite know how he's gonna do it either. He'll make up some way during the hand goes along. Yeah, maybe I'll just check raise the river or you know, double pot this or do that. He's he's got an interesting style. Of course. And, or even two pair with that all that draw with that board draw heavy. He has like, <coughs> but every other time he's had a flush draw, he's re raised. You and see what I'm saying? I don't that's, know if this is a raise or a call. A Looks like a little raise. He could have like nine eight, right? Yeah, it would almost have to be a raise, and can't imagine Why him nine, eight? calling with just the jack right high. Now, now there, there's an interesting like spot here. I mean, he's played it fast. You know, does so, Martin's but, but was he expecting this no, to happen? Set, he knows he his, how pair, active he is. Right? He has a set or two well, I think the main thing that, that's that confusing board, Martin here is that he has a six. Course, so makes yeah. pocket six is really unlikely. Calls, you know, he has, and he thinks he King Queen board, might have nine, nine, raised him on three flop. So, what really strong hand is he repping? It looks like a lot of just total air, like Jack ten or ten nine or some type of like. You know, open Any under, weak gut shot. You, you, You're so you right. And like Tony it's raising the flop close, here in though, position right? is just, I mean, what do you like a lot of times he has a hand, he's just going to call and see what, what happens on the for? turn, isn't he? Because in the river comes. Uh, exactly. I, was so, I, min I was so praying that yeah. God he put another turn. I think yeah, I think this is the right play. And, and he's not. You know what I'm saying? Because then you have an easy decision. He's basically yeah. just using I mean, his hand as something that, that sort of kills some of the combos of but hands want, that uh, Tony G could have. That and that's the, the reason pair. why he's making this play. If he thought he was so on air, some people might say, hey, you know, why not call and yeah. do some bluffs and stuff like that. But Martin just you know knows that because he has a six, it's so unlikely that Tony G can really have a value hand because he'd have to have the only combo of pocket sixes or he'd have to have not re-raised king queen uh, uh, pre-flop so he's sort of turning his his hand into bluff and tony's putting on a show 
<laughs> I mean, I, you can tell exactly what Tony's thinking. Uh, we should have stuck with JP Kelly. <laughs> And Martins is in a lot better position to be representing a strong hand than Tony is here. And so I can't imagine Tony ever coming back on the top. It looks like he throws the hand away. I love, uh, I think the difference between, you know, the, the good players and, and the guys who are great, you know, it's, you can rationalize something out, but then you gotta, you gotta do it. You know, and he just stuck 4,000 pounds in there, Martins. Coming up after the break, it's another eviction. This time at the hands of the Poker News viewers, who will be the next player kicked off of the big game five. Time now for another eviction, this time at the hands of the Poker News online viewers. They've taken their votes, we've got them in. Uh, obviously exempt this time round is our player with the highest V chip, it is Mr. Rob Young. So he is exempt from this vote, which means the person voted off the big game table by the fans is... Mr. Robert Williamson III. I just faded every time. Hallelujah, finally. Don't they know that Thank they... you. Don't they know he's been keeping me in action? Well, I don't know if Robert Williams will probably a little bit disappointed to get voted off. But again, Robert Williamson III, a big winner in the big game. And a very big winner, over 30,000 pounds. Wow, that would just be... At this table, just six. So I think uh, with uh, the, the big list and the big line that's been around, trying people trying to get in this game, that the tenure, the tone is going to change quite quickly. Newly evicted Robert Williamson III is over with Lisa Marie. I'm here with Poker Royalty. It's Robert Williamson III, also royalty from the big game, since you've won every single time you've played so far. So far, so good, and uh, I got lucky again tonight. What can I say? Well, you got lucky in, in cash, not so lucky with the Poker Online viewer vote. Well, I think they did me a favor. They showed me it was a mercy, a mercy uh, vote. They, they said, this guy's going to pass out at the table. So I've been up for a lot of hours. I'm kind of looking forward to going to sleep now. Thank you, voting public. He struggled the last one. My small blind. I mean, whatever. Come on, guys. It's automatic straddle. Okay. If you, like, if you don't put it in, it's a $500 fine, a 500-pound fine. That's it. I don't care if it's in Not or now, out. Just next make time. it, just make it quick. You know? If someone doesn't put it in. I don't care if it's in or out. Just, just act quickly. Next time you play so 500, you, play that's it. you, play into the, you do a jackpot pot, so you don't lose it. 500 for the pot. 100 goes to the dealer every time. That. Okay, that's fine. I'm not greedy. <laughs> <laughs> Tony's making Five. the rules. I just, oh, I love you. this. I mean, there's nothing like a real Probably good a table jack. captain, you know. And everyone's just kind of yes, Tony. Or yes, Tony. Cool. <laughs> I bet more than the pot. <laughs> so, uh, that's good. flop looks like goes check that's call. This little bit of an action killer here. Seven hundred. Seven hundred. And Tony decides to. It's got to be scary. You, you, oh, you get, I think, and there's a there's just a real TV element to it, isn't there? When Give him another five. Because he's talking so much, you're getting this thing. If I fold and he's bluffing, he's gonna make me feel stupid. If I call and he's got the hand, he's gonna make me feel stupid. Well, I like Yong's call there because he might not think that Tony really has a hand like pocket sevens in his range. He might think is he's, he's sort of repping like three jacks or or maybe like he made an ace on the turn and uh, all those things are really hard for him to have. But Tony went for a really thin value bet, putting uh, uh, Rob squarely on a five. And uh, now has made a, uh, a river value bet, which is uh, really, really good value. Five. And I think this is an extremely well hand, uh, played hand five. by Tony to get that much value <laughs> after the, with you know two <laughs> jacks and an ace on the board. It is, it is. That would have tested it? my quality. He's, uh, he's capable. Sure. He's qualified. You committed to the part. If you had the hard and commitment, you would have taken that part. <laughs> but you qualified oh, with man. a five, and you had to keep uh, paying. You know you. Poor Rob Young. He hates it, no but yet he loves it. <laughs> this is what you pay for. Our next player in for seat six is Christianos Andrules. What did they put on? What's that? I don't know. This Hello, is Christianos Andrules, young Lithuanian high stakes player, making a name for himself around Europe. 
I know you all recently introduced to him the uh, final table, yeah. televised yeah. final table of WPT Vienna. Hey, Mikey. One of those guys hey, that's you, bro. got a big yeah. smile on his face yeah. under pressure. Always thinking, always trying yeah. out new yeah. moves. Uh, plays the game with uh, a lot of enthusiasm and passion, and I dare say he's not here to ante his stack away. This is part of the young Pasi guys, Dusty, who are taking no limit hold of the new heights. Have you ever encountered Christianus before? I don't recognize him, but I recognize, I don't recognize screen names. And, 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 and my guess is you'd recognize his. He's well known on the internet. His, uh, you know, he's he's Eastern European. There he is, Christianus Andrulis. You know, it's eight vowels, seventy-four consonants. But this this kid, he, he can play. This young man. You will be punished. Fifteen thousand. You will be. It's 600 hard. right there. Okay. You can see that? Oh, well, he comes right out of the gate swinging. Five yeah. high. Man, that's good for 600. There's no satellite. Where's the satellite one? I don't know. You got the, the double straddle one? on, so this pot is going to play uh, yeah, where's huge. The we disqualified him. Perfect. You bring this guy in. Yeah, this guy plays great. They have to go all in. Well, that's great. We want to see it. I have 15K. And there's a. There's a. There's a little bit of a. They want an ID check on Andrulis. They think he's a ringer being brought in. I'll tell you what. He's he's one of those guys that you see on the circuit that that goes to the man. tournaments and doesn't even usually play like the main events in the festivals, but sticks to the high roller events, the six max events, um, high stakes him, cash games. Uh, he's a good player, I guess. Well, you have to be to survive in that environment. Roberto, surprisingly, just calls 600 with uh, pocket jacks. Yeah, and this is, uh, we're playing shorthanded here in this game. This is more the kind of play that we would have seen like JP making earlier, where. Me a but it, it, there, there's a lot of merits to it, right? Can I get some change, please? Well, well yeah, I mean, five, it, you four, can definitely four, make a very well disguised hand post flop. Yeah. So you weren't able to play me head up. You. Well, that's what he was hoping for to make a well disguised total monster like this. And this could get some action too because Tony G has uh, flopped a backdoor uh, flush draw and a gut shot, or excuse me, a, an open and a straight draw. Now, when you're Romanello and you're, you're talking about effective stacks, you know, he's got 33,000 pounds back. Tony G's bet two. How and why is the best way to get the money in? I think raising right now because when people lead like this, it's it's often with uh, Sorry, big lady. draws like Tony has. And big draws don't like to fold, obviously, uh, just, you know, right on the flop. So um, I think you just want to go ahead and start raising it for value right here. You should be getting tired about now. <laughs> no. uh, you can see how quiet this has got. You know, when you start fiddling with the big stacks of yellow chips, you're talking about... Uh, 6,000. Talking about the big money. And furthermore, he has the type of hand that Tony G can never put him on. So Tony G might, uh, you know, I mean, he, Tony G, if, if he also had a, a, a strong hand himself, like a king queen, might just put Romanello on a draw and never get away from it uh, if the Turner River breaks out. So uh, for a lot of reasons, I think uh, Romanello is making the right play here. Just go ahead and raise the flop. <laughs> Roberto could easily have a king jack here, right? Or I guess he could have an ace high flush draw, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. the only real like, only real value hands I think he can have is king, jack, and sixes. In in Tony's mind, he's not going to think that he could ever have kings and jacks, really. And there's a lot more flush draws and straight draws that he could be raising than, than value hands, because there's only two value hands. So um, I think Tony G's got to think that... Uh, wow. I'm really That's surprised about that. I kind of <coughs> thought he was going to call the flop and and fold the turn. And I, I, I don't know. He might have just thought it, he, he didn't want to hit a spade out, but still, right? I, th I think, I think you know, the only thing I can think is that uh, 
Roberto's stack, you know, had it been uh, uh, much larger, that he might have felt his implied odds were a little higher and wouldn't have gotten away. But I still think Roberto has plenty of stack to make that call there. I'm kind of surprised. I, 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 I feel like, you know, that's, that's to lead and then fold. Uh, you know, you might as well check raise or check call or something and then lead and fold. Oh, no, it's Chilling, interesting. Waiting, I, waiting for my I can't believe you just let that. I know it's just one car, but I just can't believe you let that chance go away. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna break the poor fellow there. I guess you don't know you're gonna break him, but I mean, I don't know. I guess maybe Roberto has a reputation for for being able to make big passes when he gets raised and that sort of thing. And there's a lot of players that. They're happy to be really aggressive, but when people <laughs> show aggression back back at them, they start to get real passive. So, have, have you ever seen Roberto's sort of YouTube clips about his his big folds? You know, he was like on the world the, the main event of the World Series. He was on the TV table. And he folded like Jack's full or something. It was the second nut, you know, on the river. <laughs> was he right? Yeah, yeah, he was right. The guy had King's full. I mean, it was like a weird. And then he, he folded uh, another full house in the poker lounge last, last year. Some water, and it, was, it, was, it was amazing. And I know if I down this, I, ordered, I might I die. Water too. What's wrong with that? Did he just, I'll play, I'll play he didn't. Water. I'm do what I think he just did. Water. Did he just call a thousand pounds off with the, the only way we get water queen four off? The guy runs a club, runs and goes to the bar and gets it. <laughs> there's, uh, there's mixing up your play, and then there's mixing up your play. <laughs> um, well, he's flopped. Uh, I just had some a gut shot to the to the uh, to a, a straight, obviously, and Martins doesn't have anything. So if Rob does choose to play this aggressively. It might actually uh, work for him. I mean, my feeling is that Martins is kind of from the London area, but it just looks like these guys have some kind of history. Well, this is a really good board for yeah, Rob to, to lead out on because yeah, it's really hard for two overcards to do anything about this because they think if they they try and raise that maybe the guy will just shove all in with some big draw or occasionally a big hand too. So uh, this is one where I actually tend to just not get involved and just go ahead and give my opponent the pot. Really? Pretty often, unless I think that he's more of these one and done type bluffers. Right. So then you're gonna flat. Then I'm going to flat a lot, but but generally, if I think that you, my opponent's going to lead the flop and likely, you know, show aggression, uh, and, and how important was that backdoor flush draw? To you know, that definitely played some part because it, it does uh, give uh, Martin some uh, uh, chances to semi bluff the turn. And he could almost profitably raise a lot of bets. When you look, Rob Young's got 30,000, there's 6,000 in there. I mean, can, can he feel like with, with Rob's range, he can profitably raise almost all the time? Well, yeah, and if, if Rob leads out for anything that looks like he might get away from it, like if, if Rob pots this, I think Martins doesn't have much of an option because uh, Rob will be committed. But if he makes a 2,000, 3,000 dollar bet, I, I see Martin shoving this this turn. He's made it 5,000. And 5,000 is going to make it pretty difficult for Martins to really do much about this just because the, there would only be a half pot bet on the river yet given, given Martin stacks if he were to just call here. And shoving here, he can't think a guy would lead out for two big bets like this and then fold for so little. So Martins is in a really, really uh, uh, kind of a disgusting spot, even though, as we can see, he's got by far the best of it. But... Obviously, he Lost doesn't like know that. Two free bit pots in a row. All right. In the worst and way, he's got like uh, seven uh, outs so if he's up against a smaller way. flush. Uh, in the best way, you know, bluff, maybe he, he thinks he's up, you know, he's got, I don't know, <laughs> nine <laughs> to 15. And, and, I mean, there, there's and, 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 a lot of ball, different. Ball, what do you, how do you feel about your equity here? This is the type of pot where only only Martins is going to know if this is a good player or not to shove all in. I don't think he can just flat because it just, the stacks get too funky for that. So, um, and what I mean by only Martins knows what to do here is that if they have some sort of history and he thinks that he can actually get a fold, if he thinks that that Rob can even fold a small percentage of the time, it's going to be correct to go all in here. But if he thinks that Rob's never folding, then you're just, it's just not good at all. He must think that uh, Rob can fold, obviously, because he's, uh, he's going all in. Nice. 
He, he can he can never think he actually has the best of it right now, but he actually does. And now Rob's in a very uncomfortable spot. Um, he's um, actually yeah, he's, 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 about uh, he's actually not even getting the price, but he's not um, he's done a million miles away. Um, I like that play by Martins, especially if he's planning on reloading if he busts. And the reason why is that, like I was saying earlier, he's such a strong player and st deep stacks benefit his strategy so much that it, it might not be the worst idea in the world to give himself a chance to double up and then really be able to exploit these opponents. The clock is ticking as we play out 48 hours straight in the Party Poker Big Game 5. See you after the break. Coming back to the big game for his second time in this 48-hour session, it's Roland DeWolf. Roland DeWolf is back. This is pathetic. Come on. You're not making a good show. And he is back with a big stack. And not only is he back with a big stack, what a seat he's got. If he could have picked a seat in this game, I believe he would have taken the one to the left of Torelli and Tony G. And, you know, <laughs> amazingly, inexplicably, DeWolf got evicted from this game. Uh, if he hadn't, he had a huge stack. If he hadn't, you can imagine he would still be here, head slumped. Uh, you know, a good 30 hours into the game, <laughs> probably on fumes. Uh, instead, he had to go. He had to go to sleep. He had to have a full eight hours. He had to have a shower, eat breakfast, come back with a massive stack, and uh, be sitting two seats of Tony G's left. Uh, I don't know. I I feel like. Uh, the next oh. couple hours could be very oh. eventful. It's a limp. Yeah. Open. I'm happy to limp. Open limp. Right. What time is it then? How long have I been playing? Let's go. What is that? Let's just get this game out of the toilet. DeWolf's found the, the two tens oh. and raised it up to a thousand. And I don't, I don't know, Dusty. I mean, this could be a spot where DeWolf kind of is going to regret the size of this raise. It's the kind of raise size that was definitely going to get action. 25, come alive. 25. I fired up this rolling DeWolf. If you win this pot, that'll be one more pot than I want to eat out. I wish you luck, sir. Two players. Check. Would you like to join the Check Raise Express? Mike, you're being voted off. You're being voted off. Really? I think that you'll get a bluff out of me on the river if you check. You think you'll bet the river? I think I'll think I, I think bet the river. If I bet, you'll raise? Mm. I'm perfect. Tony G has no, got nothing, really. He can beat Ace King, and that's about all. I'm qualified. I think you got like, what's your range here? Is like Ace 10 or Ace King? What's it on? It's me. I think oh, Roland is a is a is Ace Queen winning? Ace Queen is winning. Yeah. Yeah. Tony hey. knows uh, yeah. for sure yeah. that he's behind here. Yeah. You know he's. Obviously, there is a possible that this ace king, but he may feel like he's got to make a bluff here. The wolf's playing this well. He's got the straight out, the nine. He's pot 17,000 pounds already. And that's a great card for Roland the Wolf. He now beats the queen. He beats the jack. He obviously doesn't beat the back, this is the, you know, the, the weird straight. But uh, he'll take that river card. 8,000. And interestingly enough, because that 10 sort of completed the Broadway straight, if DeWolf had the ace king, even if Tony G had a nine, he, he really couldn't do anything but call here. I mean, uh, the ace king is too possible. And <laughs> the wolf strikes for first blood and don't think that he's not gonna let Tony G know about it. 
He told you what he had. He told you he had Queen 10. Did he? Give him the needle, he Roland. Any good? He said no. Jennifer Tilly's been gone a while, but she's still the biggest winner in the big game. Tony G, though, is on the table and has got time to catch her. Robert Williamson the third recently voted off a winner. DeWolf and Romanello still grinding at the table. Looking at the losers, terrible time for Sam Trickett and Keith Johnson. However, Mattisau looks poised to join them. He's still at the table, stuck 35,000. Rob Young still grinding back to even as well. Join us next time for more action from the Party Poker Big Game 5. Let's end this now. Show him a little heart, kid. I've never been this nervous. What are you doing to me here? I lose every hand and I'm you want to teach three. everybody how to play too. I'm not teaching everybody. I'm, we're analyzing one hand. We're getting lessons from Tony G at poker. I am the greatest to get all the money in like this. Who can do this in the whole world? There's no one. Only Tony G can do this. This is the greatest show in the world. <laughs>